Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Shaw from the University of California in San Francisco, where I am the leader of the Hematopoietic Malignancy Program within the Cancer Center. One question that I'm frequently asked it has to do with the, any, safe, any particular safety or efficacy concerns with nilotinib therapy. As we know, nilotinib is an effective second-generation kinase inhibitor that was initially approved for patients with resistance or intolerance to prior imatinib therapy and subsequently uh, approved for patients in the front line based upon its ability to get a higher proportion of patients to a complete cytogenetic response by 12 months and also to a major molecular response by uh, 12 months. I interestingly, nilotinib has also shown the ability to uh, protect patients from blastic phase transformation. There's been a lower incidence of blastic phase transformation observed in the nilotinib compared with imatinib study. So all these are, of course, very promising, but nilotinib does have its own efficacy concerns. There are some patients who, as I mentioned, do nonetheless suffer blastic phase transformation. We know for the most part that uh, there are a small number of B-seriable kinase domain mutations that can confer resistance to nilotinib. The majority of these are expected to be or are uh, sensitive to dasatinib uh, or bosutinib, and we believe all of these should be uh, sensitive to uh, panatinib, a third generation kinase inhibitor. But so far the data as far as the efficacy with uh, nilotinib uh, remain uh, looking quite good with um, four years of follow-up now in the frontline setting. With respect to safety concerns, um, I think it's important to keep in mind that there have been some late emerging toxicities with this agent, clearly uh, at a higher proportion than what's been observed in the imatinib-treated uh, population in the randomized study. In particular, there have been um, cardiovascular events, uh, ischemic heart disease, as well as peripheral arterial occlusive events, which appear to be uh, occurring in a substantially higher proportion of nilotinib-treated patients uh, when compared with imatinib-treated patients. Now, the overall percentage doesn't top 10%, but there have been studies suggesting that patients who have uh, two or more cardiovascular risk factors may be at uh, especially higher risk of developing some form of cardiovascular complication uh, with nilotinib. In addition, of course, we know nilotinib has a black box warning for um, QTC prolongation, so it is, of course, recommended to monitor patients uh, to avoid uh, having patients develop a prolonged QT on therapy. Additionally, uh, nilotinib can be associated with pancreatitis uh, and hyperglycemia. So all these need to be kept in mind uh, when you're managing your patients with this uh, agent. Can you reach that? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> All right. The next one. All right. All right. Same as before. That's great. Okay, thanks. All right. Whenever you're ready. <coughs> yeah. Hi, I'm Dr. Neil Shaw. I work at the University of California, San Francisco, where I'm leader of the Hematopoietic Malignancies Program within the Cancer Center. One question I'm frequently asked has to do with efficacy or safety considerations of the second generation B-serial kinase inhibitor dasatinib. I'm sure, as I'm sure you know, this drug was initially approved in the second line setting for the treatment of patients with uh, imatinib resistant or intolerant disease. It is a very effective agent in the second line setting and it's more recently been approved in the front line setting based upon its superiority at achieving complete cytogenetic response by 12 months when compared with imatinib, which was, of course, the previous medical standard of care for this disease. The drug is, of course, very active, and um, on the dasatinib versus imatinib study, it appears to be associated with a lower risk of uh, accelerated and blastic phase transformation, which is very encouraging. There are, of course, some patients who nonetheless develop accelerated or blastic phase disease on this drug. The most common uh, uh, cause for loss of response to dasatinib is the evolution of one of a small number of B-seriable kinase domain mutations. Of these, we think that the majority of them should respond to agents such as uh, nilotinib. Possibly bosutinib could be active in select cases. 
panatinib we think should be active against all the disatinib resistant mutations. I would encourage you to look at the NCCN uh, treatment recommendations that, that uh, draw attention to treatment with respect to specific uh, mutation to uh, help you guide you in, if, if you're facing such a patient. With respect to safety concerns, disatinib um, is generally well tolerated. We do have known for a number of years that it can be associated with pleural effusion. It's rather unique among the B-serial kinase inhibitors in that sense. These tend to be largely manageable, but it's important to, I think, inform patients uh, of the early warning signs of this, any new dry cough or shortness of breath should be investigated initially with long auscultation and, and chest x-ray if necessary, and if necessary, therapy should be interrupted to allow for resolution. More recently, there has been a, a late occurring side effect that it seems to be somewhere in the less than 1% range of patients that can develop uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension. We don't really have a, a true sense of the incidence because this was only described in an aftermarket uh, uh, setting. Nonetheless, there appear to be some a few cases of this that have been uh, reported in the literature. Interestingly, these seem to be largely reversible, uh, but nonetheless, if you have a patient in whom you suspect uh, they have any breathlessness that cannot be explained by any other cause, including pleural effusion, one thing to consider doing is getting an echocardiogram and looking for elevation of pulmonary arterial pressure there. If it's negative, I think you can rest assured that the patient most likely does not have pulmonary arterial hypertension. If it's positive, you may want to refer the patient for a definitive right heart catheterization to a pulmonologist or a cardiologist.